I love questions like this. So I'm just gonna go and strike a pose. What an amazing day. Because these kind of questions are always the ones that initially stump me. I go through the same process. Well, I don't know. On Twitter, from Dylan C. Myers, any advice for someone trying to put together an effective reel? How many tracks, how long, etc. Seems simple at the onset, but I'm sure there's some nuance to the whole thing. And the one thing I would say is, <laughs> oh, sorry, other than that is, this isn't about nuance at all. And the short response would be quite simple. Don't do your own showreel. Get someone to do it for you, if possible. But it isn't always, and sometimes, well, I guess it depends on what the reel is for. Is it to get a specific job? Has someone approached you liking your work already and wonders if you're capable of doing X for Project Y? I'm gonna go on, Dylan, that you're creating a showreel which is a kind of a cold call showreel. This is a, you know, your, your press shots, so to speak, your, your biog, your CV, your reel, that kind of reel. That sponsors a second question, which is really about you. Where are you at in your career and what are you trying to prove with this reel? Is it to be a new force in media composition? And if this is the case, Dylan, and I think I'd rarely differ from this, for me, it is about presenting you. So they don't want to hear yesterday's news. They want tomorrow's news today. I want your representatives, your agent, or maybe even an editor that you know who's recommending you to a director to say, check this cat out. He's got a background in drum and bass and music for hardcore pornography. But I think his stuff is really interesting. And if you like this, you should hear his orchestral. The things that stimulate and satisfy you, you know, certainly something for me, my example would be um, orchestral. I didn't go to music college, don't read music, didn't study orchestration, and listen to my orchestral music that's nearly as good as some of my peers. This is totally useless for your potential client. Untrained ears, orchestral track two or three, it'll all sound exactly the same. Not about nuance, I promise you. It's difficult to say this because it sounds so rude, but this is me assuming a false arrogance. Your listener is stupid. They have socks stuck in their ears, so you've got to slam them round the chops with something they've never heard before, something out of the ordinary, make them think, wow, if that's what he can do with dog barks, imagine what he can do with an orchestra. In my time as a fledgling composer, yes, they would ask the question, can you do orchestral mock-ups? Do you own Giga Studios, the thing they used to say? They'd say, listen, I just need to see how you work to picture. These things now are a given. The ability to write orchestral, the ability to mock up successfully. Everyone has access to orchestral samples. Sorry about that. The ability to work to picture is a given. So what is it that gets you noticed? And this draws me back to, and as I've said, I've been more wrong about this than I have been right. But one time I feel I and the people I was working with did get it right, was for our pitch for Alien Isolation, because I felt that this was more of a cold call. We were up against four or five really established composers and I knew that they had the same abilities and chops as us. So it was almost like going back to the position that you're in, Dylan. It was proving to them that we were a creative force to be reckoned with. Yeah, yeah, we can orchestrate and score, score to picture and do all the computer, computer gamey stuff and STEM and all of that kind of stuff. But what is at the heart of hiring the three of us? This is Alexis, Joe, my brother and myself. So what we did is we came up with something that was highly conceptual. We invested a lot of money into it. It was a real kind of a bold move. It was very minimal. It was Steve Reich's singers doing Steve Reich stuff. It was very kind of romantic. It was in a major key, I believe. It may not have been better than our other fellow peers demos. I bet you it was different. It simply got noticed. My mum, she used to, when she was uh, auditioning as a dancer, she always used to wear her shoes too loose so she'd mistakenly kick a shoe off and apologise for it. Deeply unprofessional, but it was her recovery from that. Oh, she's sweet. So you've got to kick your shoe off. There are a few kind of notable uh, relationships between directors and composers. Obviously John Williams, Steven Spielberg, but the one that always sticks in my mind is Steven Soderbergh and Cliff Martinez. I believe Cliff had a tape going around Hollywood of dogs barking. I think he made a piece of music from dogs barking or it might have been pots and pans, but it was something highly unusual. And what I think Steven Soderbergh went for was not 
wow, that's really clever how he used those dog barks to create an, an amazing piece of music. It was just that Cliff would want to. So you need to remove your ego. You need to remove it at every step of creating this reel. First of all, it's going to be the tracks that you don't necessarily like, that you maybe, that maybe other people would say are totally you, but are maybe not the you that you want to be. You know, I've been putting my John Williams sound-alikes and my Hans Zimmer sound-alikes on my reels for donkey's years because that's who I want to be. But that's not what they want. They want Christian, the nutter on a hill with coffee and dogs and swearing. You've got to move your ego from the concept, from the composition, but also from the craft. It's not about the number of notes. They're not impressed by this. It's not about your interesting use of tonality. It's removing your ego from your production chops, removing your ego from your engineering chops. It isn't about that. It's about spirit, duende, as the Spanish call it. The most successful reels I've ever submitted have been the reels with pieces that you know, have maybe one or two instruments. The focus is clear, not these tidal waves of orchestral samples and, and, and complexity. You have to also remove your ego from the macro. You know, there are intros that you will love to your, uh, uh, your pieces, but what they want to hear, the meat and taters. So you have to edit it really well. Don't make the tracks too long. Why? Why do you think they're going to listen to that for six minutes? That same kind of subject. Is it because it goes into amazing... People will go, yeah, that's great, flick, 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 flick. So you've got to hit them within the first few bars. And I would say no more than, I don't know, an album length. It simply is a list, looks like a familiar number of tracks. Uh, any shorter, it looks a little bit possibly, you know, arrogant, in the wrong direction, any more than 12, it's like, well, well, you could have honed it down to your best music, not 30 tracks of stuff that you've done. I think a really good tell on what's working on a reel will be the stuff that then goes on to appear in the temp. What will happen is the director will center in on two or three tracks of yours, probably before making a decision, and then they will fall in love with these tracks and advise their editor to maybe try putting them into the picture. These will tell you what were the successful stories in your reel. But it's likely that you will, before getting any job, have to not maybe pitch, but maybe prepare a mood board of stuff specific to the job once you've talked to the director, and that is a different matter. So the reel is about you. It's about you getting your boobs and your willy out, and uh, people don't always like getting their boobs and their willies out. It's not, not easy, but that, that for me is your, your cold call reel. Dylan, if you're, as I presume, are starting your career, people selecting you for, certainly for a big job, it's gonna be a bold move. So think about that, contextualize yourself being put into that. We're going with Dylan and you know, it's a bold move, but uh, you should check out his, his reel. Focus in on those different categories. Why send someone 12 of the same stuff? Think about sound. And if you're gonna focus in on a sound you have created or have performed, why, why not be a sound they've never ever heard before? A bass saxophone distorted through a guitar amp with a chamois lever flapping in front of it. If it's about composition, if it's about beauty, make sure it's the most beautiful thing, even if it's just played on a piano, maybe a solo voice. If it's about arrangement. How about taking a diverse set of instruments that have never been put together before and making them do weird things, you know, tapping guitars with pencils, eboing banjos. And if it's angry, make sure it's the angriest fucking thing they've ever heard. Make it unlistenable. Make them go forward to the next track. Directors want to know that you're going to help them find the edge of the envelope, that you will pull back having taken things too far. Mediocrity has no place in a reel. This is the time for blue sky thinking, for creative fireworks before the broadcaster, before the studio, before the producers and the execs rein you in. They're going to want to hear fire, not an ambition to become a journeyman, not an ambition to crank out orchestral ostinatos, an ambition to create and contribute to movie gold, awards, recognition, plaudits. And again, ad nauseum. 
they're not going to be able to extract that from brilliantly arranged orchestral music. No matter how kind of angular, how interesting it is, I'd be very, very wary about symphonic scale orchestral stuff that's done with samples. Everyone's at it. And there's a reason for that, and that's great. That's the job. But to get the job, boobs, willy. And if you're thinking, well, just a few orchestral bits and there may be some more daring stuff that I can put on the end of the reel. Your ego is getting in the way. And I think something that's very important to realize also is your reel is not your CV. Your CV is your CV. So you don't need to put any great emphasis on the work that you have done on your reel. Oh, they'll be impressed by this piece because it was from X, unless it was Star Wars. Imagine someone asking John Williams to put together a showreel. Just give them the first chord of Star Wars. Anything else, John? No. The reel, though, is about you as a creationary force, a visionary, someone who is going to take the director to find the edge of the envelope. Prove that you can be irresponsible. Be irresponsible with your reel. I mean, when have you ever heard someone say, well, I chose them because they had a really meek showreel. Dylan, thanks so much for a brilliant question. And as I've said many times before, this whole YouTube channel depends on these questions being asked because I don't think they need to be answered until they're answered. What are your views on what makes a good showreel? And maybe if you're not a media composer, I know there's a few editors and alike who watch this vlog, maybe you have some completely different views on showreels and what makes someone stick out from the crowd. Please contribute in the comments down below. And if you haven't read the comments down below, you're missing two thirds of the value of this vlog, if not more. Thanks as always, Dylan, for your questions. And for watching. Subscribe if you haven't done yet. Lots of nuggets of uh, information from a journeyman of a composer to come. Ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put up a video and one of them for Dylan would be much appreciated. Thanks very much for watching.